you might be a junior RPA developer looking to develop yourself in the field, or maybe you are an experienced RPA developer looking for a competitive edge, something that would make you stand out even more. Or maybe you are a manager in a company that is looking to ramp up their RPA team and would like to know what to look for in an RPA developer. In this video, I will share with you my take on what makes an RPA developer a great one, as well as the reasoning behind these features. Hi guys, Gabi from Yopia Techs here. Today's video will have a bit of a different format compared to the usual training and tips and tricks videos. It will still be a monologue, so I will try to keep it as dynamic, informative and even entertaining as possible. And the topic is, what makes for a great RPA developer? What skills and features should one have to stand out, in a positive way, as an RPA developer? A small disclaimer to start with, I won't claim yet to have managed dozens of projects with hundreds of RPA developers, but with about 15 years of experience, 10 in IT and 5 on the business side, working with different consulting companies as well as end clients in multiple industries, and having a computer science degree, a master's in ERP systems, a certification in project management and a nano degree in machine learning, I've experienced a bit of both worlds and I will attempt to pick features and skills from all these areas and draw a portrait of an RPA developer I would love to work with. And as this is a rather subjective evaluation, I would love to hear from you your take on this, as well as positive and negative experiences on the, on the subject. Anyway, you have been warned, so take everything with a pinch of salt. So let's start. I will not name the traits in a specific order of importance, just in the order in which they came to my mind. Previous exposure to business processes. I think this is crucial. I've seen enough developers of different types that were very good at writing code, but failed to really understand the business process, the why and what for of the process that are supposed they are supposed to automate. Now, of course, this is why business analysts are also in the picture. True, a great business analyst could reduce the risk here, but still, if the developer has no feel for the business process behind the process design document, the more hands the information will pass through the more distorted it could get to the developer. An RPA developer could do this job just assisted by the business analyst, but he won't be a great RPA developer. And just imagine what would happen if the business analyst would not be too great either. Have you ever played the Chinese whispers game? I don't want to know what the developer will start automating. Understanding the business pain points and focus on the customer experience. You might also want to call this empathy. Have you ever had a friend working in a company where the IT department has built a great IT solution that is completely unusable by the business? It would be great if there was an user experience department who could jump in to help. But for many automations, this is not the case. So it's great if the developer would have a customer focus and understanding of the business pain points and proactively offer a solution that would not just get from point A to point B, but also take the customer on the ride and even help him enjoy it. Curiosity. I first saw the power of this feature in my junior years of SAP consultancy, more than 10 years ago. I've had colleagues that stopped as soon as they managed to make something work. And I've had colleagues that were really curious and would dig into the system until they would really understand how everything worked together. Fun fact, in my mother language, Romanian, SAP literally means digging. And with a technology as young as RPA, curiosity plays a crucial role. If you strive for greatness, it is, of course. Otherwise, how could you stay up to date with all the developments, improvements, and new features of the technology? And I also found out that early curiosity, not settling for, oh, I made it work somehow, not sure why, cuts a lot of later debugging costs in the project. Being a self-learner. This goes very well with what I've said before about curiosity. In such a green and fast-moving environment as that of RPA, and with a lot of good official academy trainings and community trainings on YouTube and other platforms, 
a proactive self-learner will quickly gain the upper hand on the developer who learns just enough to be able to move over to the next task. Developers working with other, more established technologies might get away with this, but with RPA, this will just not cut it. Being a good communicator. Depending on the context of the project, the RPA developer might need to communicate with internal or external clients, business analysts, managers, and senior users. A great RPA developer is expected to articulately communicate on a level understandable for a user or manager with zero technical knowledge. I think nobody has put this better than Einstein, saying, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. So alongside with a solid grasp of the technical solution, a good communication skill is required to avoid expensive misunderstandings and communication gaps. Being a logical thinker and having a programming background. If all the previous features were soft skills, this is one of the hard skills that an RPA developer should have or quickly require in order to be able to build great solutions. RPA is often being marketed as a solution that is business user friendly and requires no programming skills. And yes, anybody could click around at his desktop, record the screen and create a bot. But that bot will most probably not run on any machine other than the one it has been recorded on. If we talk about real bots, at least a programmer's mindset is required. You don't have to be a hardcore programmer knowing everything about internal memory allocation and how to work with pointers, but you have to be able to think in terms of data structures and quickly create a pseudocode in your mind that could then be translated into if conditions or loops into your automation. You have to think about what might go wrong and cater for that proactively. Seeing the big picture, scalability, modularity, reusability, and robustness. This is about being able to distance oneself from the actual coding and tasks at hand and look at this from a higher vantage point. It's about making the automation work not only at the present moment, but also think about how to make it ready for the future. A good automation is one that can be rolled out with minimal effort and changes needed. Do we expect spikes in volumes of data that need to be managed by the bot? How do we make sure the automation is scalable and can deal with those spikes in an efficient way and not create a bottleneck. Maybe it makes sense to split the automation in different bots that work together so that when the spike comes, we can employ more instances of a certain bot to avoid the bottleneck. Is the automation modular, easily maintainable in case of software interface update or something similar that could come anytime in the future? Is the automation reusable or, is it, or at least parts of it? Is there potential to convert parts of the automation into libraries that could then very easily be used in other automations? And is it robust? Did we think about probable scenarios in which the bot might fail or get stuck? Does it fail graciously if it needs to? My point is, there can be a huge difference between two automations that both work. And the points above can mean a higher initial investment, but will most certainly pay off in the mid to long run and the great RPA developer has these things in mind with every automation. Patience, this is golden, they say. Software debugging could be at times really frustrating and the bug often hides itself in plain sight. Without patience, it is really easy to take shortcuts or just stop investigating as soon as it seems to work, but you don't really get to the root cause of the bug and fix it. And such superficial quick fixes often strike back later and raise the cost of an automation. Being familiar with other automation tools, Excel macros, some programming languages like Python, Java, anything like this helps. Sometimes you already have partial automations available in a company that could be reused and integrated within RPA. It helps to be able to understand those or maybe even adjust them a little. Also, when a bit heavier lifting is needed, this could be trickier to do with RPA directly but having the knowledge to write a quick Python script to solve the problem will reduce development time significantly. Being organized and creating good documentation. Most of us procrastinate this task until everything is done. It's okay if we do it then at least, although in a long, complex development, we could already forget some of the details. But a good RPA developer recognizes the value of good and accurate documentation. Looking into perspective, the automation will most probably need maintenance or some change requests and many times the original developer will not be available anymore so somebody will have to pick it up and do the changes. 
In complex automations, even with good documentation, this could be a very tough task. But without it, it's a clear recipe for disaster. Knowledge sharing. In my junior years, I was lucky to have good leaders as managers who were also great knowledge sharers. I learned that the best professionals, whatever their roles and positions, are the ones that are always ready to sit down with a junior and share their knowledge in a humble way. I've come to appreciate this and it has become a work principle of mine and I strongly believe that such a trait greatly increases the value of an API developer. Already has some skills or is curious about AI and ML. RPA technology is catching up and integrating more and more cognitive and intelligent features. The goal is to make this available to developers and users in the friendliest way possible without requiring them to understand the underlying concepts. While this is great, it does not remove the advantage of actually understanding ML to a deeper level for at least two reasons. One, the ML needs and value potential in a company will never stop at some predefined ML models offered as default in an RPA software. It will still greatly help if the developer could be able to create some simple models by himself, in Python for example, and integrate them in automation. And second, it surely helps if one understands an ML model at least to the level where one can tweak the model's parameters to improve its performance. In today's competitive world, and with the accelerated rates of AI and ML, missing on these skills limits drastically an RPA developer's potential. API experience. API stands for Application Programming Interface, and uh, it defines the calls and requests that can be made together with the data format expected. API makes your automations much faster and much more robust because they avoid the user interface, which is many times slow or could be tricky. In SAP automations, for example, I've started using puppies. Sometimes it could uh, require greater initial effort to clarify how it should work and what is the expected format of the API if it is not very well documented, but afterwards it really pays off. Being a team player. No man is an island, and in the business context this is seen even more. A highly intelligent team member with a negative attitude can destroy entire teams and projects. And as an RPA developer, you can't work alone. Along with good communication skills and knowledge sharing, a positive, constructive attitude and a healthy amount of fair play are critical to make a team a great place to be and make work enjoyable. The alternative? You don't want to hear about it. Okay, this video has become extremely long, so I'll stop here. As this is a new format, please let me know if you enjoy it, ranting about different RPA topics, and I would love to get your top features and skills a great RPA developer should have. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Hey guys, if you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so you won't miss out on future content. Thanks.